Athens cabbie Christos Kyriakousis has been driving these streets for nearly 20 years. Governments abroad, you can trust them, they can help you. Where in Greece, they try to screw you. <laughs> this divorced father of three spent more than a decade in New York, chasing the American dream, studying economics at college. The biggest mistake that I ever made in my life was coming back home. Okay, it was my relatives, it was my, ha my home, you know, and everybody else was here. And I love the place, but the place doesn't love its people. First stop on the taxi tour is a protest march. This economic crisis was first triggered late last year, immediately following the election of Socialist Prime Minister George Papandreou. He claims to have discovered that his predecessors had cooked the books. The government debt had reached the equivalent of a staggering $450 billion. The government has now announced a range of austerity measures. Wages and pensions have been cut, taxes increased, and government spending slashed. But Greek workers are having none of it. Today, Christos joins 30,000 protesters in the streets. I have to pay more money. They ask me to pay more money and nobody knows where it goes. No, no money goes for education, no money goes for the medical system, no money goes for retirement. We don't even know if we're going to get retirement someday but we still have to pay more and more and more money every day. Communists and conservatives join forces as public servants face 10% pay cuts and an end to early retirement in their 40s. Well, we're all fighting for our rights. We're all fighting against European Union rules, against Greek government rules. Actually, there is a war against the governments, the European governments. Perhaps only in Greece could you have senior police applauding peaceful protesters at one end of the march, while their riot squad colleagues break out the tear gas and batons at the other. Anarchists launch a ritualized display of violence and vandalism. Despite the best efforts of the Hoodie Brigade, Athens certainly isn't burning yet. But these images, beamed out to a bewildered world, do little to restore foreign investor confidence. Everybody seems to be cynical about everything. Oh yeah, yeah. No, nobody trusts nobody. These days, Athens can be a tough place to do business, particularly if your business is tourism. Christos takes us to meet one entrepreneur determined to succeed. Okay, thank you. Nick, how are you? Hi, Mark. Nick Euronymous Good. is second generation so Greek see, Australian. This Perth businessman moved here with his family eight years ago. It's not an ageist society. So He's got 15 million euros invested in service departments, a backpacker hostel, a bar, and the portfolio keeps growing. Uh, this is our sports bar, the Athens sports bar. But the unrest makes for nervous tourists. In the last couple of days, I mean, we've lost over 4,000 euros in lost earnings from people who've cancelled from our backpackers. In this building here, uh, 22 apartments. Yeah. And in the building next door that we're just going, coming up to, we've got uh, 16 apartments. Well, we're, we're doing renovations and they've been doing some renovations up there, as you can see. Right. It's only taken two and a half thousand years to finish it. <laughs> and it's still not finished yet. No, uh. but apparently 2020, it's gonna be complete. Half of Greece's 11 million people call this chaotic metropolis home. 
Nick Euronymous says far too many of them are employed by the inefficient, corrupt public service. And that, he insists, is Greece's biggest problem. I understand that there are about 1.025 million public servants. That's the major problem here. The major problem here is the fact that these people have to justify their existence. And, uh, and also, they have to be paid. Yeah? Nick's team is now busily preparing for the summer tourist season. But every minor building alteration requires permission. A torturous bureaucratic process. And when I say nonsense bureaucracy, there are up to, in certain instances that I've had, 25 people have to vet one piece of paper to get something agreed to. Hey, do you want to have a coffee? We yeah, can have a why coffee not, here. Why not, why not? And with the bureaucracy come the kickbacks. Small business permits, even basic services such as getting a driver's license or treatment in a public hospital, often require an illegal payment called fakalaki. You sort of sit back there and think, well, you know, what am I going to do? Am I going to stay in business or am I going to sort of play the game as, as the particular public servant wants? And, and you just have to. And you, you got no choice. We, we don't call it a fakilaki. The uh, expat Australians call it a facilitation fee. The way I look at it with the fakilaki, okay, with bribing somebody, if somebody works in the public sector, okay, he's got a family behind him, yeah. and he makes like 600, 800, 1,000 euros a month. Yeah. How are you going to support your family with 1,000 euros a month? You can't. So you got to find different ways. You're going to get your fucking lucky. And with the fakalaki comes tax evasion, which Christos says is now a national sport, fueling the black economy. Do the rich people here pay taxes? No, rich people don't pay taxes. No? <laughs> no. There is no saying in Greece, the more money you steal, the better off you are. <laughs> You steal a few, you steal a few euros, few, a few hundred euros, you go to jail. You steal a few thousands of euros, we'll talk about it. You steal a few million euros, you become a hero. <laughs> <laughs> With protesters on the streets, Prime Minister Papandreou has been striding the global financial capital. His message, Greece is too big to fail. The European Union and International Monetary Fund have now offered Greece a rescue loan package totalling 45 billion euros. But the fundamental problems remain unresolved. They're the twin evils of corruption and massive tax avoidance that fuels the black economy. Among the oracles divining this crisis is the head of the corruption watchdog, Transparency International. His prophecy is grim. The black economy I used to estimate to be about one third of our gross national product. The latest information I just received from the bank it is 37 percent. So 30, it is 37 percent. 37 percent, which is quite significant, which means that our undeclared gross national product is anywhere between 80 to 100 billion more than what we officially declare. Transparency International lists Greece as the most corrupt nation in the Eurozone and estimates that 800 million euros were paid in low-level bribes last year, some of it to tax auditors. The corruption is uh, quite extensive. I will say one part, which is uh, what we call the petty corruption, is almost endemic and uh, it needs to be addressed. It is a serious problem. And to find the black economy, you need look no further than the streets under the shadow of the Acropolis. They set up these little stands with uh, counterfeit everything from sunglasses to, uh, of course, the famous fake Gucci bags. This is a huge problem because the government is losing money in terms of taxes on goods. This is Rene Pappas' neighborhood. A Greek-American marketing consultant from New York, Rene moved here nearly 20 years ago. But her iconic Greece 
is now undergoing radical change. So it's quite a multicultural scene down here today. Uh, extremely. Uh, Greece had been a very homogeneous country until about 10, 12 years ago. But not anymore. Greece is now home to 1.2 million official refugees and illegal migrants, 10% of the total population. They're mainly from Africa and the Middle East. With its poorest borders, Greece is seen as an easy entry point to the rest of Europe. These are the foot soldiers of an illegal street trade now estimated at 15 billion euros a year. They're left in a legal limbo and then they're sort of fending for themselves. So what do they do? They have no income, they have no money. You're either going to steal or you're going to be hired by these local gangsters who bring in the counterfeit goods. I'm very happy that people come down here to enjoy themselves. What I don't like is this. I don't like this. This is an archeological site. We can't afford to have this be the vision of Greece. As they make an arrest, police are confronted by refugees. This is one sector of the Greek economy that's determined to play by its own rules. Tensions over the refugee problem have also spawned a far more violent side to Greece's culture of public dissent. Well, here in central Athens, a bomb apparently has destroyed the, the offices of an extreme right political group at nine o'clock in the morning. Uh, apparently there are no injuries. But what's even more extraordinary here is the lack of interest by anyone passing by. Unfortunately, in Greece, these kind of attacks are, are quite common. And what in other parts of the world would be regarded as an act of terrorism or major crime, well, for many here, it's just seen as a legitimate form of political expression. Anarchists claim responsibility, declaring war on the government and anti-immigration groups they accuse of inhumane treatment of refugees. In the following days, two more bombs are detonated. So the taxi drivers are on strike? Yep, 24 hour strike this time. Now, how, how come you're not driving a taxi today? We're in a, we're in a civilian car today. Oh, come on, thanks to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> if they see us in a taxi, they're gonna break, uh, break it up, beat us up. Last time I get beat up, I get my shirt ripped off. The taxi was kicked off, a few dents on the doors. They get pretty violent. The drivers march on Parliament. Outraged by a government demand that they now issue receipts, keep books, and pay more than just a flat tax rate of 1,200 euros a year. Hell hath no fury like a cabby short change. But uh, 1,200 euros a year doesn't seem an awful lot to pay in tax. You think maybe a cabby should pay more? Well, if they make more, they should pay more, but they also pay fuel tax, uh, taxes on repairs and everything else. Then, amid the standoff, a surreal moment. The guardians of the tomb of the unknown soldier stride through the masses, impervious to potential rioters or the threat of tear gas. Today, it seems, they're about the only workers still on the job. Everyone agrees, yes, it's, it's, it's terrible, cuts must be made. But, but nobody, nobody wants to be the one that makes the sacrifice. Absolutely, yes, that's true. That, 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 that's the problem that uh, basically uh, everybody agrees except for himself. And now we have to say that, no, this has to apply to all of us. Now, the, the basic issue, of course, in our society is that traditionally there was not a lot of confidence between the governments and the citizens. The trust wasn't there. 
This is a city of ruins, full of memorials to past glories, both ancient and more recent. Many Athenians believe their economic downfall began with the 12 billion euros spent hosting the 2004 Olympic Games. Do you think the Olympic Games was worth it? Nope. <laughs> I guess they were worth it for, you know, as far as advertising the country, but not as, as far as money goes. Because yeah. generations and generations will be paying for it. These world-class sporting facilities now lie largely abandoned. So they don't like us filming them, Chris. They've got no, security they guards everywhere. Uh, Why is that? Mysticopathia. What does that translate as? That you want to keep the secret to yourself. Before his current incarnation as a corruption watchdog, Kostas Bakouras ran the Athens Olympics Committee. I have seen um, many um, uh, assessments of what it takes to make, let's say, a 15,000 stadium, and I have seen how much it costs Barcelona and, and, uh, and Atlanta and how much it was in Sydney, and the estimates we used to have in Greece for some of those, it was anywhere between 50% uh, more to four times more. Four times more. Oh yes, there yeah. was four times more. So therefore, I knew that there was probably a lot of corruption and other things, and uh, and therefore it cost a hell of a lot more. Athens is a beguiling mix of chaos and culture. Under the gaze of the goddess Athena, protesting public servants and police take up their usual positions. So far being civil servants, it's a fairly civil affair. But whether that continues tonight, well, we'll just have to wait and see. The back end of the parade, of course, are the hard men of the protest movement, the anarchists and the communists. And they're the ones that cause the real trouble with these kinds of marches. Everybody sticks to a choreographed script, ending with the inevitable rough and tumble with the riot squad. A few bruises and some property damage. But the rest of the city barely notices. Five hundred metres away on the next night, a very different trial struts its stuff. Here, the prevailing scent is not tear gas, but Chanel No. 5. There's not a hoodie or helmet in sight as the Athens A-list comes out to play. Rene Pappas is a mover and shaker on the social scene, and she's keen for us to experience what she calls the other place. And you know, life goes on. I mean, there might be a crisis, but women still buy clothes. There's a saying that Greece is a poor country full of rich people. Tonight, many of them are in the room. As the good times rolled through the 1990s and soft loans and grants poured in from the European Union, fashion was just one industry that boomed. I see Greek women and girls, you know, teenage girls, and they they really care about what they're wearing. It's really changed an enormous amount. Even here, government austerity measures are starting to bite. Though there's still been time for some last minute bargains. On the news today, they said, you know, they, they, they started that new luxury tax today. Well, I think last week, 14 Porsches, two Bentleys, one Aston Martin, and one Ferrari were sold in Greece. How was the show? I think it's good. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> that was terrific. But I'm probably not the right person to ask about fashion. So. <laughs> okay. This period, the economical crisis, we tried to be calm and we waited. Where some see beauty and style, others view a society living beyond its means bankrolled by a line of easy credit. Back in the beginning of the 80s, uh, 
uh, when we had new and uh, political changes and we start having a lot of money coming from the European community. It was the issue that you can become rich very easily, you don't have to work hard, uh, uh, you can will and deal yourself and there was that kind of mentality uh, and in a way we have lost what I will call probably a generation if not more. Now, these kind of people would be hard for them to understand that it is hard work, it is consistent, it is uh, competitiveness, it's efficiency, it is innovation that you have to apply and not just uh, fooling around and trying to win and deal yourself through. Far from the glitz is a place that epitomizes the lifestyle of the old goods. With Nick Euronymous, we make one last stop on our street tour of the crisis. So is this fairly typical? We're one o'clock in the morning, out at a club. It's early. This is early, it's just started. I mean, uh, this will go on till five o'clock in the morning, five or six o'clock in the morning. The locals use them. They're, they're the sort of places where they go to expel their angst from the day of, you know, listening to the world cave in on them, of uh, the economic crisis and all that sort of stuff. This is Rimbetica, Greek blues, that emerged a century ago from the bars and brothels at the bad end of town. You hear the guys and the, and the girls in the band singing about the hard life and the stories and the hard luck stuff and the romance and the broken hearts and all that sort of stuff and you go there and you listen to their problems and they make your problems feel a lot less. Perhaps this laid-back philosophy explains a lot about Greece's economic predicament. But it may also offer a way out. Fueling Rimbetica is a force the Euro bankers and economists would have trouble quantifying. The Greek passion for life, Kefi. Kefi is enjoying your life, enjoying today, enjoying the moment. I suppose the Greeks do it better than other people because they've had a lot more experience at it. As always, there's a morning after the night before. And a head-splitting economic hangover to be endured. The Europeans are prepared to put 45 billion euros on the table to pay Greece's tab. But if there's no fundamental change here, is this just throwing good money after bad? They have to recognize that that party is over and we now have to start working very hard. So for those, it will be a big shock. For the older generations, I think it's not a big surprise because they have gone through hard times before. It is broken, it needs to be fixed. It's not working. And if things don't change here, continue on the course you're on now, what happens? Yeah, there are 12 gods. <laughs> I suppose we go up to the Parthenon and <laughs> wear our togas and have a bit of fun, you know. <laughs>